In this video, we're going to have a look at completing Activity 3, Part C, which is the report. In the previous video, we created a query to organise the data that was going into the report. Just a quick reminder of what's going in the report. It's a list of positions, and for each position, we're going to calculate the number, total number of current staff who hold or have held that position. And we need to display a suitable report title, the name of the position, the surname of the staff member, the position start date, position end date, and the total number of staff. And the report must fit on one page. So let's go to access now and start creating our report. So we're going on to create and we're going to use the report wizard. First thing is to select the query that we are basing our report on, and that was the one I created earlier. We're going to put the fields in the report. We need the position, surname, position start date, position end date. We don't need the end date of their employment. That's not being asked for. Click on Next. Now, how do we want to view our data? We want it viewing by position because we want the the data to be grouped on position and then next. We don't want any further grouping, so we can leave that as it is. And then at this point, if you wanted to do any sorting of your records, you could do it at this point. So, for example, if you wanted them in surname order, you could select surname. That hasn't been asked for in this, so we're just going to click on next. We need to make sure it's a portrait report. We can leave it on stepped and click on next. I'm going to change the title of the report to RPT report position. And we'll have a preview of the report just to see what we've got and finish. So this is our report. There's our title that needs changing. We've got some headings, position, surname, position start date, position end date, and then we've got each position listed with the staff underneath. Uh, we've got one person, Ahmed, that's had two positions, so we've got one shown with an end date and um, all the others have no end date. So let's just go through and make some changes to this report to make it better looking, easier to read, and also to demonstrate to the examiner that we've actually done some formatting. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is change the title and I'm going to change these headings as well uh, to make them clearer. There's one thing that comes up on the examiner reports is we're using field names like post start date. You must make sure you change these into headings on the report rather than using the field names. So let's just go into report design. OK, if you want to make this heading the full width or centred across the full width of the report, if you stretch out the heading and then go into format and centre, you can also bold and increase size here. Uh, I'm also going to change the background colour as well to the report header here. So I've done a right mouse click back colour and I'm going to click on white. Now these reports, it's, it's good to understand the different sections. So we've got a report header, so that appears at the beginning of the report. We've also got a report footer. I'm just going to drag that out because we are going to put something in the report footer. Basically, this is something that will appear actually at the end of the report. It doesn't matter how many pages long it is. It will come at the end of the report. And we've got a page header. So this is something that appears at the top of each page of the report. So if this was a multi-page report, it would appear at the top of every page. Then we've got the position header. So remember, we've grouped everything on position. So every time we have a change of position, all right, we get this position header. And then we've got the detail, and this is the all the records that appear in our report, 
under each position. So, for example, if we've got, I don't know, the uh, vending machine operator, for example, there were three people. So three people's names will appear here. Then we've got the page footer. So this is something that will appear at the bottom of every page in the report. OK, let's make some changes. We've done the heading. Let's change these headers. So I'm going to change the position, surname, position date, position end date. I'm going to make those bold so that they become clearer. And I'm also going to change the oops. the headings so they're clearer to whoever is using the report. Now I'm going to move the headings and the fields around. And if you click on both the heading and the field, you can move them together. So I'm going to move those over. I'm going to move the start date over as well and the surname. And I'm doing that so I'm going to create some space to put in the position header the total number of staff. Because remember, for each position, we've got to do a total of the number of staff in that position. So I'm just going to add a heading here in the header. And you'll see why in a minute. So if we're going to report design and controls, and pick up a label, draw that on. And I'm going to call that total staff. Just bold that like the rest and just narrow that down a bit. You'll find yourself going backwards and forwards a bit with these reports just to get them looking, you know, something like reasonable. OK, let's just have a look at what we've got then. If we go back to report design and go to report. So we've got position report, we've got the position, we've got the total staff, surname, position start date, position end date. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to take off these banded rows. I'm not keen on those on these reports as they come automatically in access. And I'm going to put in some lines to divide up the report, lines that I put in myself that just make it easier to read. So let's go back to design view. Let's take off those banded rows first. So Every time you click in a section of the report, if you go into format, there's this thing called alternate row colour. So there's none in the report header. We have a look at the page header. That's greyed out again. There's none there. Let's have a look at the position. Right, we've, it's turned black. So let's have a look at that and select clear. Same in the detail. See if there's anything in the footer. No or in the report footer, no. Okay, that's fine. And let's put these lines in. So I think I'm going to put one in under the position, each position. And then we'll see what it looks like. So if we're going to design controls, pick up the line, and then we draw that on. OK, I'm going to edit that. Oh, sorry, format while I'm here. Let's have a look. Shape outline. Let's pick a colour. Always use a limited palette with your colours. Don't go for anything overtly colourful. It doesn't look particularly professional in a report. And I'm going to change the thickness as well, so it's a bit of a thick line. OK, let's have a look at what we've done so far. OK, oh, we've got a band of drawing there. We need to take that out. 
Okay, that's quite nice that. Okay, let's just go back to design view. Just check these banded rows again. Let's have a look at detail. Just make sure we've got these. just check again that's better we've got rid of those so all we've got now is a line breaking up each position so now I want to put on the total staff and I also need a total at the end of the report so let's uh, put a total we can put it in this header so if we go back to design view I'm just going to move that total staff one up a touch. It's just below the others. OK. And we need to put on, there's a number of different ways we can do this, which we can actually do it in the group and sort, or we can put on a text box. I'll do the group and sort, actually. So if we just come down, having clicked on group and sort, you can see we're grouped on position. And if we come along and click on more, you can see we've got no totals. So click on the down arrow, click on surname. We can do a count of the values and we want to show in the group header. And you can see automatically we've got a count of surname. I just want to drag that count along so that it's underneath that total. Just narrow it down a touch because it's going to be like one, two or three. Uh, and this total stuff, I'm just going to format that now to the left. OK, let's check what we've got. OK, we've now got manager one, office assistant two. That's right, two people. Office manager one, salesperson one, vendor machine operator three. That's fine, so that's worked. So now let's put on the total at the end of the report. So go back to report design. And if we come down to the footer, I'm just going to copy this one here. See if we can copy this. Wherever you can, copy and paste. One thing, it saves time and it also means your You've got standard formats and things. And then I think we'll probably just copy this uh, count of surname as well. Mm -hmm. But because it's going in the report footer, it will carry that out for the whole of the report. OK, let's again go back to report view, see what we've got. Then we've got our total staff and it's added up to eight. Let's just do a quick check on our total staff. So we've got one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's eight, that's correct. For me, now the only thing that I'm going to do further on this, let's just check we can see everything. Nothing's truncated, no names are truncated, no titles or anything are truncated. No, that's fine. I'm just going to drag this total staff and eight back so it lines up under this total here. Uh, and I might just put a line on as well at the bottom to show the bottom of the report. For this, I'm just going to show you the layout view because sometimes it's easier to work in layout view. So just identifying those and dragging them back. Let's just jump down. Let's just go back up a minute. So we can see. And it's jumping about. That's better. 
so it's lined up underneath and I'll just narrow that down a bit because it's just a little bit too wide might have to go into this out no there we go and bring that total staff in a bit nearer And that one, I'm just going to reformat that to go back. I'll do it to the centre so it looks better. That's it. OK, so we've now got that lined up. And I said the last thing I was going to do was just put a line in to separate the end of the report. So I'm going back to report design. And this line here, what we can do is click on it, copy it. And then we'll put it in the report footer because we only want it to appear once. Let's move this down a touch as well. There we go. Right, let's have a look at the report design again in report view. It's nicely laid out across the width of the page. The title's been changed and it's been centred across the width of the report. We've got a little bit of colour on with the lines that separate up the positions. We've got a line at the bottom. We've got the total for the whole report. And we've also got a total for each position. So that's now the report finished. It's a good idea with these reports. Uh, and later the forms as well. If you go into this exam with a an idea of how you go, what formatting features you're going to use in your report before the exam, so that you're well prepared on the features that you're going to be using. The next thing we've got to do with this report is to make sure we save it as a PDF, and we can do that quite easily by going on to um, there's a number of ways of doing it. One, we can go on to File, go on to Save As, we're going to Save Object As and PDF, Save As, and then obviously select where do you want to save this to and Publish. And you can see now mine's opened up in a web browser, and that's the evidence to the examiner that this is in fact on just on one page when it's published. So that concludes the video creating the report. Just a quick recap for the report. Make sure you do a query first to organise the data and then base your report on that uh, query. This was quite an easy report in this paper. Sometimes they're a little bit more complicated than this, but it was pretty straightforward. So it's a good one to get a good understanding of the different parts of the report and how to do totals, for example.